Well, good morning and welcome back to my Wyoming garden. I'm inside. I'm not in the garden. Because it's raining. Cats and dogs out there. It's been raining for about, I think this is the third day that we've had rain. We're supposed to have rain for two more days. I am loving the rain. Though it does make it a predicament when I'm in my gardens. Not that I don't go out in the rain because I've been out twice. My hair is not as, my dew is a little sagging down. Now in this episode, episode two of My Wyoming Garden, we're gonna do several things. The vegetable that we're talking about today is rhubarb. Now in 1947, the New York court declared it a fruit, but it's really a vegetable, but that's okay. Rhubarb sometimes is called the pie plant. And rhubarb actually means barbarian root. <laughs> and another name that they added to the dictionary in, I think it was about the 30s, um, people would say rhubarb when they were having a disagreement with someone, which I thought was interesting. A little weird, but that's what was happening in the 30s, and that's how they used it, and it was, it was a conflict, a, um, something that you were engaging with another person in an argument. And they would say rhubarb. <laughs> and so that's just not one of the names. So that being said, we are gonna do actually a couple recipes at the end of the video. One, to make Victorian barbecue sauce. And that has a whole history that we'll talk about. And we're gonna use the stalks for that. But the leaves, we're actually going to make a bug spray. And it's really good if you have a problem with flea beetles. It, we found it did a few other things that I'm gonna show you too, which was kind of fun. Now we are also in this, in today's episode, we're gonna to start to root up some red currants and some northern cranberry bushes. We're gonna pot up our squashes and pumpkins that have gotten too big in their little cells into bigger pots. And we're gonna talk all about that. I took a lot of clips in the last few days in between rain and when it was sunshiny so that we can pull this all together. So stay to the end, see those recipes that you can try. They're fabulous. And let's enjoy my Wyoming garden. The first thing that we're doing in this episode is propagating red currants and northern cranberry currant bushes. And I'm gonna do a 45 degree angle on the bottom, making sure that I'm going by nodes because the two nodes that will be buried in the soil eventually will always make the roots. In between, always be wiping off your, your shears. And this is the root powder that I'm using. It's called Power Grown and you use very little amount. Now I have the cranberries in one jar and the red currants in the other. And that water mixture has the rooting hormone in it and it can stay in there for up to 24 hours. Now, the next day I am putting it in the soil and I wanna make sure that I'm having two nodes in the soil because that's where my roots are gonna come from. And I like to go around the outside of the container and then I'll fill it in. Now I'm gonna put a lot of them in each container because they're not gonna stay in there that long. I just want them to have their roots started and then I will move them into their own container before I plant them outside later on this fall. But this is a great way to get a lot of plants with a little bit of time and money. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more soil on there. And you can see even since yesterday, those those nodes, those buds have started to swell. So here are the, all the cranberries and I have 16 of those. And then I have 15 red currants. So that's a great way to really increase your stock that you can plant in your yard, your homestead. You may sell extra ones to family and friends or farmers markets. And I actually use the extra water to water into that soil and I'm just letting them drain before I put them under some lights. But they are looking really good. 
Now we have to pot up all those pumpkins and squashes that we had done. And so I have some soil in these um, pots that I had from years ago. And I'm just going to set each one of those on there firm it a little bit and then I'm going to take soil. Now I planted these May 20th so basically 10 days ago and they are already having their true leaves on a lot of them and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do each one. Don't you see how those lovely roots just come right out of those little containers that they've been growing in and I just fill it in. Now you do want to firm it somewhat, but don't do it too much because the water will do a lot of that. And you have to be a little gentle on these new plants. Make sure that you're always putting in a stake so you know exactly which plant is which. And a lot of these seeds I actually saved from last year and the year before. And I am just planting and planting and planting and planting today. And everything is going to get watered in good. And then I'm moving them under the lights. And they will stay there till they're a little bit bigger. And they're getting a little bit stronger. And I will just make sure that they stay moist but not soggy. So let's make some bug spray for some flea beetles. Now I like to grow my rhubarb from seed. And they make beautiful rhubarb plants. And I have some in full sun, part shade, part shade in the morning, part shade in the afternoon. They all grow wonderfully. And so we broke off some stalks. And this early in the spring, the stalks aren't that long, but they're thick and strong. And I'm going to take those leaves this time where I would just put them in the compost around the base of trees and plants. And we are going to chop them lengthwise. Then I'm going to just basically roll them up so that I can chop them the other direction because we are gonna make a bug spray. Now you can use this not just on flea beetles, you can use it on a lot of plants that you're having a problem with that. And I always like to coat the leaves at least three times, letting them dry in between. And rhubarb is one of those fun, crazy plants that it can actually live up to be about 60 years old. And the stalks can be pink, red, green, even yellow, or a combination. And they're just really a versatile plant. If your rhubarb is getting a little sad looking, that plant, it's probably time to divide it. So we're putting leaves in one of my big stock pots, put water in there. All the extra leaves I'm putting in those buckets, I'm gonna let them steep outside in the sun. and. After it's been boiling for 15 minutes to a half hour, it's ready to strain. Now, if you forget about it and it sits in your pan for a while, it doesn't matter. So we are going to um, strain that and all of that plant material that's in the strainer is actually gonna go in those buckets that are gonna be outside um, steeping to make more of this fabulous bug spray. And it's nice because you can spray it under the leaves, on top of the leaves, use any kind of spray sprayer that you want. I just have a hand pump. I just put a funnel in there and I can just fill that up. Any of the extra, I will put in quart jars so that I can use it later on. And make sure that you're always putting your lid on tight so it doesn't leak or spill and get onto anything. Now here's a before and after. Now the stock pot is not dirty. It just has some kind of chemical reaction from different things that were cooked in it. But it just becomes clean and it also, the spray will clean your sink. Now let's make some Victorian barbecue sauce. And I have done this many times and we're going to use 8 to 10 cups of rhubarb, 3 fourths of a bag of brown sugar, 1 and a half cups of raisins, one half large onion chopped, a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of salt, three teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, and if you wanted it a little more spicy, put a jalapeno in there and it will make a great sauce. Now I always put the apple cider vinegar in first and then I just start putting everything in there. Now Victorian barbecue sauce is really interesting because they would make this sauce before the tomatoes were ripe and so that they would use it just like they would ketchup 
So anything that has a ketchup recipe, you could use this Victorian barbecue sauce. It is wonderful on a hamburger even. And so I have it on medium high heat and I am just gonna keep stirring it. And the it will just get softer and softer and more juice will come out of the rhubarb. And you really want that to just completely break down. And then I am putting it in my Vitamix. You could use a blender. Or if you wanted it more like chutney, just leave it like that. But I like to blend it up. And it becomes very thick, kind of like applesauce. And it's real hot right now, so you have to be careful. And I'm gonna put it back into my stock pot until I am ready to put it in the canner. It's all the way cooked though. And, but when you're ready, have your jars ready, everything is clean, you're using a funnel, and you're gonna pour it into your jars. I like to use half pint jelly jars just because it's it's nice to give away. It gives me enough to, for Joe and I to use at any one time. And I, it's not staying in the refrigerator opened for very long. I like to run a knife around there just in case there's some air bubbles in there. And then make sure that you're always cleaning that rim of the jar. You could use um, a wet paper towel is what I usually use just to make sure everything is clean before I put the lids and the rings in it. Now, it's going into the water bath. In Wyoming, it takes 20 minutes. If I was down in Arizona, I'd only have to do it for 15. Um, after it is done, it's gonna sit in the water for five minutes before I pull it out, and then it's gonna sit on the counter for 24 hours, and then I'll put the labels on there. Episode two of My Wyoming Garden. Interesting, so many things to do this in the springtime. Every Monday, a new episode of My Wyoming Garden. And every time I will try to cook, bake, have a recipe with something that is growing in my garden. I will see you next time.